Making homemade bone broth in the Instapot is my favorite way to make broth now. One, because it brings out that gorgeous, beautiful gel every single time. But truthfully, my biggest reason is because I can have gorgeous bone broth full of flavor in just an hour's cook time. Now, when it comes to making a bone broth, I use it, of course, in my cooking and casseroles and gravies and soups, but we also use it as a natural medicine because bone broth, when made with all of the good collagen and the gelatin from the bones, and of course, vegetables, and I also throw some herbs in mine, they are very nourishing to our gut and our stomach intestinal linings which is really important because the majority of our immune system is actually in our gut. So nourishing that and having good quality bone broth is one of the things in the arsenals that we keep on hand in our homestead at all times. And we're actually almost out. My husband has come down with not feeling so well. He's been going through my home canned broth. So we need to up and replenish our supplies. When I'm using big bones, like these are marrow bones. So when I'm using these larger bones, I like to roast them. It just makes it a darker color and a more robust flavor, and we like that. But you don't have to roast them if you don't want to. For these larger bones, I roasted at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 45 minutes. And you'll know when they're done because on these smaller bones, where you've got the center here, this part will become soft, so I can actually push on that. And I'll know that the marrow's soft. The larger bones take a little bit longer where you've got these uh, larger cuts here. And so I can push on the center of this is soft, the outside part of it's not. But when we cook it in the Instapot under pressure, it will release all of that out and it won't be a problem. So this is the base of our broth. Now the Instapot has this stainless steel insert, which I like. I prefer to cook with, cast iron's my favorite, but stainless steel is next. So I'm gonna put the larger of these bones we're gonna put those right inside here. And then I'm gonna put a couple of smaller ones around there. And I'll do about half the pan and then I'll save this other half to do a batch when this one's done. That's the beauty of using the Instapot, even though I can't do quite as much as a big, huge stock pot, because I can get it done in an hour, I can make up a whole bunch of broth in one day and it's still faster than letting it simmer in a stock pot for up to 48 or 72 hours done the traditional way. One of my favorite things about making broth is there's not a lot of prep work involved other than perhaps roasting your bones. So I've got some carrots here and I just wash them really good. There's no need to peel them. So they've been washed really well, especially if they're not from your own garden. And then I'll just kind of break them up into some big chunks. You don't even need to chop them. Next up, I always like to add some celery. So we want to make sure that we get this rinsed well. And then the same thing, there's no need to even chop them. I just kind of break them up into a couple large pieces. Leave the leaves on, the leafy ends. We'll let them go in there. And I'll save a couple of these out because I know I'm making a second batch. I've got more carrots. So I'll save a few of these stalks of celery for our next batch. Now the other gorgeous thing about making your broth is I like to use the onion skin. Now if it's onions from our garden, I don't really worry about it. I know exactly where it's been and what's touched it. If you have onions from the store, just take out that very, off that very outer layer. And again, because I'm using the skins, I do go the organic route. Totally up to you, whichever way you wanna do it. But put the skins in there. They have a lot of flavor. They've got a lot of good nutrition in the skins, even those dried onion skins. They're gonna give it flavor depth and they're also gonna give it that nice dark color. We'll put those to go out into the compost bin. So a lot of times when I'm cooking, I keep an odd and end bone broth bag. So I will put ends of celery that have the leaves that I'm not using, obviously just little ends of onions, garlic, just things that I haven't been using, carrot skins, and save those up to then toss into my broth pot later. So I'm gonna put a couple of these in here and you can mix some of your scrap bag with fresh just as easy so fast work here I will just take this part off because I might have a little bit of dirt left there this is a store-bought onion we're out unfortunately at this time of year from all of our onions from our garden and then I am just going to half 
and quarter this and put it in just like that. There is no need to chop this up finely. Now when it comes to our garlic, I will remove just this outer peeling. So that outer layer that we can't really wash and it could have germs and ick that we don't want on there. Then the really fun thing, after I've gotten that outer layer removed, then just take off some of your cloves of garlic. Now we happen to like a lot of garlic in our household, so I'm gonna take off quite a bit. Garlic's got some really great properties, not only flavor-wise, but also medicinally. It's one of the powerhouses when it comes to helping us when we're ill and boosting our immune system. There we go. Now the great thing about this is I'm just going to smash these to help release the oils and to get those compounds going. Break those up just a little bit more. Skins and all is gonna go right into our Instapot. Some fresh sprigs of rosemary from the garden. And now we'll top this off. We're at our max fill line. So we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. We wanna make sure we've got this flipped to sealed, not vent. Lock it into place. And then we are going to pressure cook for one hour on high. So once your Instapot has went for an hour, then I do a manual release. Now when you do the manual release, when you've got that much liquid in your pot, beware that you may have steam shooting out. So make sure that you are well far back. Alrighty, so we are release valve down, steam is out, so we're going to open up our lid, keeping it as a shield for any hot steam that's still coming out. And there is all of our delicious, yummy broth. Now you can see that is still boiling, so we're gonna let that cool down. Just turn off our Instapot, and we're gonna let that cool down before we strain it. You can see I've got my bowl and my fine wire mesh strainer ready to go once we're cool. Okay, we're gonna put our apron on and get ready to strain and transfer our broth out. So I've got a big metal bowl here and then a fine mesh wire strainer to put all of our solids in. Now be careful, this is still a little bit warm so you might wanna use a hot pad or oven mitts. We're gonna take that out and oh my goodness, she smells so good, you guys. And I just want to show you, look at these bones. So almost all of the marrow from inside of them has cooked out and is into this lovely broth. So some of the bigger bones, it hasn't came all the way out of. So the bones that still show quite a bit of marrow in the center, that it's not all cooked out and dissolved into the broth, those are the ones that I save and I will use these larger bones to do another batch of broth. And then move this to the sink, and we're gonna pull up the strainer. So here's all of our vegetables and some of the bones left. So we're gonna pull that out, and I missed a few little pieces there when I was pouring it in. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So you can see that lovely golden color that we've got here on our beef broth. Now, if I'm gonna can this, I need to put it in the fridge so that it cools and the fat layer solidifies so I can skim the fat layer off on top before I can it. But if you're not canning it and you're just gonna be cooking and using it over the next few days, then you can just store it in the fridge and use it and you're done just like this. This, my friends, is the gel that we get when we use the Instapot, and this is what you are after when you make your broth. Just look at that gelatin. If you want more old-fashioned and tra traditional skills, both in the homestead kitchen and the garden and barnyard, make sure that you hit subscribe so you get notified as soon as we release our next new video.